and I appreciate all your kindness out there. Uh, I still have a job, which is good, uh, but it's good to be here. So, so uh, where have you guys been already? To quote Thomas Jefferson of the Broadway show Hamilton, what did I miss? Brad in New York City has been asking that same question. Did I miss something? Were you away? Connell, wait. also New York City, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Not that Connell. I think the news story here is Cavuto has a heart, don't you think? No, Connell McShane. I think the real news story is you could type, don't you think? Yeah. Everly emails the hottest, cutest, smartest, sexiest, funniest anchor in the world returns. My meaningless life suddenly has meaning again. Welcome home, Neil. Well, thank you, Everly, I, I kind of think. Dr. Avian in Boston writes, please tell me you're eating healthy. Please tell me, doctor, you're not one of those doctors who checks. Donna via AOL. Now, how do I know it's the real you? Well, look at this Lego hair, Donna. No, no one can recreate this work of art. And believe me, Charles Payne is trying. Still, Crystal email, she ain't buying any of it. I think you died, and Fox doesn't want to admit it. Remember, you look like a corpse before you had open heart surgery. Oh, I forgot about that one, Crystal. Thomas in Detroit, whoopee, you're back. The truth is all of your substitutes were far better. They never interrupted and always remain classy with guests. Did Connell write this one too? It's a pity you're alive, frankly, but welcome back, I guess. Tom and Alicia in Atlanta write, we are so glad you're back, Neil. We missed your charming face all of these months. Bob emails, start slow, Cavuto, don't rush things. Mel it in like O'Reilly, he's built a career on it. <laughs> Now, now, Bob, let's not be mean. Sharon in New Orleans, you have been gone a long time, Cavuto, but look at the bright side. You missed all the soap opera fun at Fox while you were away. Sharon, what do you mean? Uh, something happened when I was away? I... Anyway. Donovan emails the impressive guest list. My staff on both Fox Business and Fox News have lined up for my return week. Carl Icahn, Mark Cuban, Ben Carson, Nigel Farage. Who's next, the Pope? No, the Pope is next week, Donovan. All right. And Porsche via Yahoo. Cavuto, who, frankly, Neil, you're not necessary anymore. Your incredible staff never missed a beat. And with hosts who were astounding and a guest list that was second to none, stay home and let the kids handle things. Ditto Steve in Rochester, New York. You strike me as rich and cheap. <laughs> You've no doubt stashed away a lot of money, enjoy it, and retire so you can have fun and wear your whiny, obnoxious voice again. That sounds like pain. That's his kind of editorial <laughs> stuff. Then there's Mike and Irene in Cleveland. When we heard about your open heart surgery on top of your MS and cancer before that, keep it coming, sympathy, keep it coming, we figured you would get the message and not go back to work. But no, no, you come waltzing back like Douglas MacArthur, who we might point out, Neil, died in a Jeep crash, just saying. Jeez. Well, thank you for noting that. Oh, yeah, Con, like this is the first time you've heard it. Well, those were but a few of the tens of thousands of emails and cards and letters I received over these past few scary months. Each and every one made them a little less scary. Now, I can honestly say, I can honestly tell you this in all seriousness, I wouldn't wish what I'd been through on anyone, even CNBC watchers. It was scary stuff, yet even scarier than these images of me walking around hours after my operation in a hospital gown that sometimes showed a bit too much. I'm saving you the excitement, ladies. It's for our premium members. Anyway, anyway, many have remarked on my socks here. Now, there's, yeah, stop it, all right? They're supposed to prevent me from falling. They did not work. Uh -oh. Those two young ladies walking with me crushed them to death. But day by day, I walked a little more and tried a little more and pushed a little more and prodded by my top surgeon, Dr. Jacob Scheinerman at New York's Lenox Hill Hospital, eventually got over my funk. This might surprise you, by the way, but some TV anchors can get a tad self-absorbed and self-pitying. This doctor would not allow it. Dr. Scheinerman said there is a way to beat this and deal with this. Keep at it and never give up. And everyone, and I mean everyone, including so many of you, with all your prayers and mass cards and good thoughts, you refused to let me succumb to what some call a cardiac crash. So I want to thank you for that. And I want to thank my wonderful staff, led by Ralph Giordano and this fine network, Pam Ritter, on my Fox News shows. And, of course, all the fine and much better looking folks. I tell them that in front of them. I don't mean it. I think I'm better looking, Frank. Who took over this chair in my absence these many, many months? And this was very demanding work, led by Charles Payne, who I don't think had an hour go by that he wasn't anchoring in some part or form. <laughs> Connell McShane, 
The guy doesn't sleep, but he always looks great, always is calm. Everybody loves him. I have no idea why. <laughs> and last but not least, the, the exact opposite of all of <laughs> Charlie Gasparino. I especially asked... I didn't for, shave just for you. Really? That's just... You shaved actually an hour ago. <laughs> but I mean, he, he's a very virile young it's man. The, it's the but I asked for these three guys right up top because I love them to death. They're great friends. And they did great, great work in my absence. 